Okay, so I've started a project here and I'm using the first person template project. So this is uh, your basic first person template project as you have just created it. If you press play, then you've got this gun which shoots a ball and can knock things over. You've got some static mesh actors in the world which have physics enabled and you can knock them around and that's about, about all you can do in this project. So this will be perfect for us to, uh, to use as we create our reverse time mechanic. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is create some sort of data structure to store data each frame as we're saving uh, information. So let's go to our C++ project and I created a project called reverse and here in reverse I have my source folder and if I open the reverse folder inside of that you can see the built-in classes that are automatically made when I create this template project. So I have my reverse character and I've got my game mode, I've got a HUD by default. Um, here's the projectile because it's a first person uh, template. We've got the projectile and so on. Now I would like to create a, a special struct that we can use to store our frame data, to store the data that we, cre that we um, want to save each frame as we're um, recording uh, in other words, when, while we're not reversing time, we're recording uh, and at any given point in time, we should have the previous 15 seconds worth of data stored. So each, each frame I'm going to store a package of data. So I'm going to create a new struct called frame package that we could store that data in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new header file here in our uh, source folder in the reverse folder where all these um, classes are, I'm going to create a header file for a new struct. And if you uh, want to see a good example of how this is done, you could take a look at say vector.h. Now vector.h is where the f vector struct is defined. And uh, you can take a look at vector.h if we find it in here somewhere. Uh, it's going to be down in here. Uh, we'll find it. Here it is, vector.h. I want to open that and you'll see that vector.h has a bunch of includes. It includes anything that it needs to use. And then here it says struct vector or f vector and it defines the f vector. And you see that it's got uh, three public floats x, y, and z. And if you've worked with the f vector, then you've uh, utilized the X, Y, and Z as well as probably some of these built-in functions that Vector has. So we're going to create a new struct similar to this in its own .h file so we can include it uh, anywhere and, and use that struct. So why don't we go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and um, get back to where we were here. I'm going to uh, it was basically in the UE4 folder. That's where all these, all the engine code is. So I went ahead and closed that drop down because it opened up when I searched for vector. Now we're going to create something and put it here in the source folder and more specifically in source reverse. Now we can click on any class in this folder and look down in the properties tab to see its path on my computer. So you can see here I have it stored in D Unreal Engine 4. YT toots for tutorials, reverse source reverse and reverse character.cpp. So I'd like to go ahead and, cre and create a new item and put it in this same folder. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on the reverse folder and go to add new item and select header file. Now for the location, I'm going to make sure to click browse and you'll see it wants to put it in the intermediate folder, but we need to go back out to reverse and click uh, source and then reverse. And now we will be saving it here with all these other f uh, files here. And we're gonna call this frame package. So let's give it a name frame package dot H and we'll click add. And now you'll see that we have a nice new empty header file and it's stuck right here in the reverse folder in our source folder along with everything else. Now, because we're going to be storing things in here like vectors, rotators, uh, we're going to have to include those at the top here. So I'm going to do an include and I'm going to say uh, vector.h 
and I'm also going to include rotator. Uh, and by the way, this vector.h, it's not simply vector.h, we have to actually include math slash vector.h, that's where this is located. And same with the rotator, we're going to include math slash rotator.h. Okay, so now that we've included these, we can use those data types. So we're going to create a new struct. So we're going to say struct, and we're going to call this f frame package, and we're prefixing it with an f to keep up with Unreal Engine's uh, struct uh, conventions. So basically in Unreal Engine, if, the, if something has an f in front of it, you can uh, safely assume that it's a struct. And we're going to give this a uh, constructor, so let's say f frame package. And we can actually force inline this. And if you are unaware of what the inline keyword in C++ does, and what force inline in Unreal Engine does, which essentially has the same effect, what it does is um, this inlines the function in question. So anywhere in the code uh, where you call this function, in this case the function is a constructor, well, the body of that function, whatever code is in that function body, will get replaced by the function call in the code and upon compilation. And so what that does is it allows you to prevent uh, the need to jump around in code whenever there's a function call, the flow of execution jumps to that function body. And so inlining prevents that. And so we're gonna have a, uh, a constructor here and we can define it just below the, uh, just below the frame package body um, like so. We can say frame package double colon, frame package, and then we can give it a body. Now this is basically a default constructor, but if we wanted to give it a constructor that can take some input parameters, we can do that too. Um, but first we need to actually have some variables here. Um, so what are some of the things we're going to store each frame with this data structure? So one is gonna be the location. So anything that, the, that it will be using this data structure to store data, we're going to wanna to store that thing's location, its rotation. So let's say f vector location, we're gonna store that. We're also gonna do f rotator rotation. And then we need linear velocity and angular velocity. Both of those are f vectors. So we're gonna say f vector linear velocity and f vector angular velocity. Now, another thing I want to do eventually is I wanna be able to reverse time for the actual player itself so when the player is moving around and looking around, I'd like to be able to reverse time for that as well. And um, in that case, if this frame package is storing data for the player, we're gonna want to know whether or not that's the case. And we're also gonna want to store the uh, X, Y input for the mouse. So I'm gonna say bool B is player pawn. That will be true if this frame package is recording data for the player pawn. And then we're also going to store an f vector 2D. So we're going to have to include up here math f vector 2D dot h. Actually, it's vector 2D dot h. And we're going to have an f vector 2D. And I'm going to call this mouse xy. And so we can store the mouse x value and the mouse y value each frame. Uh, if we're storing data for the player pawn. And then finally, as we're storing data, we're gonna want to store delta time each time, uh, so that way we know how much time has passed between these frame packages, and that way later on we can take account for variations in frame rate. And also this allows us to keep track of how much time we have recorded. If we only want 15 seconds recorded at any given time, well, we can keep track of that by uh, keeping track of the delta time of each frame. So each time we store one of these, we'll know how much time we're adding to the count. So let's do a float and let's call this delta time. Okay, so I mentioned that we could create another constructor for this. 
if we want to be able to pass data in. So we're going to do another force inline. We're going to give this another constructor. And this time for the input parameter list, we're going to take an F vector, call this location. We're going to take an F rotator called rotation. And actually to avoid uh, the confusion of the names here, since this is the same name as one of the members, why don't we call this in rotation, because we're passing it in, and in location, like that. Uh, next we can have an F vector in linear velocity, and then an F vector in angular velocity. And then finally we can pass in a float delta time as well. So now whenever we're constructing one of these frame package structs, we can do so by simply passing in our, our information into this uh, constructor. So let's go ahead and create the uh, body for this constructor overload. I don't need the force in line. And uh, we're going to uh, fully qualify its function name. So frame pa package, double colon, frame package, and then we have the function body. And all, all we want to do is initialize the variables, and we can do that by using this particular notation where you put a colon here after the closing parentheses. And after the colon, I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to uh, type location parentheses, and I'm going to use in location. What this is doing is it's initializing the value of location with whatever gets passed into this constructor. We can do the same thing with rotation. We'll be passing in in rotation. And the same thing with linear velocity. We'll be passing in in linear velocity. We'll do the same thing with angular velocity. We'll be passing in in angular velocity. And then finally, the same thing with delta time we'll be passing in. And with this one, perhaps we should call this in delta time as well to avoid confusing this with the same, uh, with the member variable of the same name. And this will be passed in delta time, like so. And we don't really need anything in the function body. This takes care of everything. So if you haven't seen this notation before, it's the same thing as going into the body and saying location equals in location like that, and so on, right? So um, it has the same effect. Okay, so this takes care of creating our frame package struct. This is a good data package that we can use each frame when we're storing information uh, while we're recording time uh, well, we're recording data uh, as we want to keep a running 15 seconds worth of uh, data for any given object that will be participating in our time reversal process. So this concludes this video where we create our data structure uh, and we will continue in the next video.